McDonald's used to hit different. You know, I remember the good old days, you know, before the high blood pressure, before the cholesterol, before I used to have to actively exercise and take care of my body. I would go to McDonald's pretty often as a kid. But one of my highlights was always the breakfast. <sighs> yes, waking up on a Saturday morning with pancakes and all kinds of uh, other items, all sealed in an environmentally unfriendly form container. It's like holding magic in your hand, magic that somehow shuts down your kidneys, a sparkle in your stomach. And then as I got older and my metabolism slapped the shit out of me, I stopped going. But that flame never really went out and McDonald's breakfast still was that occasional treat. And then everything changed. It's not surprising these guys are loving Taco Bell's new waffle taco. Mmm, mmm, that's good. I love Taco Bell's new breakfast. A delicious new breakfast everyone can love, even Ronald McDonald. Fucking Taco Bell breakfast. When Taco Bell breakfast hit the scene, it was a game changer. Taco Bell, a restaurant known for its shitty, low-quality imitation Mexican food, had fluffy eggs, biscuits, sausage, and uh, other breakfast items. I, I don't know. Shit you'd never expect to see coming out of this region of the fast food world. And they weren't the only one. Soon Wendy's, Burger King, and dozens of others had a very similar experience for what they consider breakfast. Very similar. But it wasn't just the menus. Everything about these restaurants' culture seemed to be starting to change. From the menus, to the decor, to advertisements, all seemed to be moving towards a de-branded, cool version of each other. Almost as if they were becoming parodies of one another. Now, to any normal person watching this, I know what you're thinking. Competition, blah blah blah, out-competing each other, blah blah blah, capitalism, blah blah blah. I know, I know, okay? But, the way my brain is wired, I have to make a mountain out of a mold. You know, what was this de-branding? Why was it considered quote-unquote cool? What was so cool about everything becoming a flat, sterile carbon copy of each other? You know, could it be some grand conspiracy that all restaurant chains were in on to slowly sap out the creativity of the American workforce? Or was this our fault? Fast food company driven by their relentless competition, are increasingly converging into a sterile, identical, homogenous mess, mirroring the grim economic and creative dystopia we are already witnessing. And we play a bigger role in that than we may think. I want to start off by saying that this is not me shilling for any of these companies. At the end of the day, most of them support policies and donate to causes that want to criminalize my entire existence. So don't think that me being nostalgic for weird shaped tables and dollar menus is me trying to dick ride Ronald McDonald. I just want to find out why everything is so bland now. So I did a little bit of research. All of these companies, no matter who their audience is or what their marketing campaign may be, are all capitalistic in nature. They're billion dollar empires and will do whatever they have to do to maintain their empire. This usually involves following trends, trends that we the people set. We collectively as a society have been steered towards a specific philosophy philosophy that's shown in our art, the way we interact, the way we operate, and everything in between. What we see in these restaurants are just a reflection of what's in the mirror. Before we even talk about what's on the outside, I think we need to take a peek inside and look at the menus themselves. I mean, look at this shit. Motherfucker is basic as hell. Fast food companies are streamlining their menus at an alarming rate. Instead, focusing on a limited set core of items. Now, these select core items are being implemented and replicated from chain to chain all across the nation. Let's rewind the clock back to 2019. Remember when Popeyes just came out with that chicken sandwich and everybody started losing their fucking mind? Tonight, civil unrest explodes in several major American cities. There have been reports of fires, looting, and violence in the streets. All over a fast food promotion gone terribly wrong. Well, the chicken sandwich didn't exactly go away. It expanded. Soon, Burger King, KFC, McDonald's, Wendy's, and yes, even Taco Bell had their own variations of the chaotic menu item. Companies knew it was the hottest new thing, so they had to keep one up in their competitor. You're not gonna care about restaurants A sandwich once you try restaurant B, and so on and so on. It's kinda like that shit from SpongeBob when the niggas were selling everybody grease and motherfuckers just kept eating it up no matter what, how unhealthy it was. Kinda like that. You soon begin to neglect the rest of your menu in order to solely focus on that hot new item. And this becomes a problem because of what it leads to. 
you homogenize your entire menu, you lose a lot of cultural diversity in the culinary world. Now, I'm not saying Wendy's is high culinary art, but there is a sense of cultural variety to having more than just two flavors in front of you. As these chains begin to standardize their menus and make them more identical, a lot of regional specific and culturally significant items and recipes become extinct, lost in the corporate void of competition. This process erases the deep and rich tapestry of culinary traditions associated with different cuisines that made their way into fast food. Oh, but don't worry, it'll still hit you from the kitchen counter. With every menu item now identical and as flat as a Burger King drink machine, customers are now only being presented with limited choices. It's not that hard to choose between three identical versions of the exact same thing. This lack of variety leads to people getting taste fatigue and feeling dissatisfied. That sense of, oh, I'm gonna try something new on the menu is now gone placed with the comfort of simplicity. That in turn instills a sense of conformity in us. The consumer teaches us to get used to it and to expect a limited standardized set of choices. This conditioning extends beyond just fast food though and into the consumer world altogether. It conditions us to accept the mindset of it is what it is and seeking out any alternatives to serve us is futile. When you accept the mediocrity going on inside, it almost makes it impossible to notice the ruckus and sheer buffoonery that's going going on outside. Earlier I mentioned how the Popeye's chicken sandwich triggered a rat race of restaurants all competing for your dollar, and how in the process of doing so they began to copy each other in various ways. Well, that wasn't limited to just marketing. In fact, it began far sooner in the form of design with restaurants slowly becoming dull and rebranded. Now this trend is far more closely related to the big broader issue of homogenization in fast food and how the usage of these copycat marketing strategies affect everyone. This shift towards lifelessness is nothing more than a consequence of the race for conformity and uniformity amongst these brands. Many of these fast food chains have moved on towards a more minimalistic and the branded aesthetic in their restaurant designs. I mean, it's evident when you step in. The neutral colors, the clean lines, the lack of distinctive decor, gone are any original unique pieces that signify the distinct brand and image of an establishment. Instead, we have carbon corporate copy number 386. The goal is to create a generic, unbranded atmosphere that appeals to every customer. But this is not just found in the restaurant designs, but the logos themselves. Having this uniformity take over interior design makes it increasingly difficult to distinguish one chain from another. The experience begins to feel like a generic, interchangeable one, ultimately detracting from the brand's distinctiveness. While yes, minimalistic and the branded aesthetics aim to cater to a broad audience, and it's often clean and inoffensive in terms of their space, they also strip away any character and personality from that dining environment. The result is a lack of uniqueness that leaves consumers with a feeling of dining in an impersonable, indistinguishable sterile mess. Who am I kidding? Y'all just want y'all big mess. But you're probably thinking, how the hell does this affect me as a consumer? When you shift towards minimalism and debranding, it weakens the emotional connection between your consumers and your brand itself. The absence of any unique or memorable or visually appealing elements in your experience reduces that brand's ability to create a strong bond with its audience. Without distinctive interior design and decor, the chain's identity becomes less clear. Consumers have a harder time associating particular atmosphere elements or experience elements with a specific brand, and it makes it a hell of a lot easier for them to switch to a competitor without a sense of loyalty. The generic, de-branded environment can contribute to a sense that fast food chains are interchangeable. This lack of distinctiveness can lead to a reduced brand loyalty as nobody has any reason to prefer one restaurant over the other. And that's the problem with adopting a minimalistic and de-branded aesthetic. It reflects the industry's much broader trend towards conformity and uniformity. While yeah, it may serve a broader customer appeal, you're left with a lack of character, identity, and emotional connection. Ultimately, ultimately contributing to the dullness and sterility of the dining experience in these fast food establishments. But there is always a silent victim in all of this. While I'm sitting here in a comfy chair complaining about restaurants not having weird chairs and funny colors anymore, the workers are getting the far worst end of the deal. If there's anything we learned from the chicken sandwich debacle, it's that people are fucking animals and will disvalue human life at the drop of a hat if you give them a reason. 
Now these companies already don't value the humanity and lives of the employees that literally make the company and give them billions of dollars. But what happens when it's us, the consumers that don't care either? Well, we give these companies the biggest stamp of approval to make their employees' lives living hell. While the atmosphere of the restaurants is slowly getting sterilized, so are the well-beings of the workers themselves. In the highly competitive fast food restaurant sector, there is often a race to the bottom in terms of labor costs. Companies seek to minimize expenses, including labor, which often can result in low wages and limited benefits for the work. This contributes to economic exploitation, as you often see restaurant workers struggle to make ends meet and routinely denied access to essential benefits like health care and job security. On top of that, many restaurant workers are employed on an hourly or part-time basis. Without that job stability or consistent hours that provide that financial security, this makes it even more challenging for workers to plan their lives, access benefits, or even have a work-life balance. Plus, they're often already paid minimum wage or even less in the form of sub-minimum wage, which is usually lower than the standard federal minimum wage. Sub-minimum wage is notorious for making workers particularly vulnerable to economic exploitation, as their income heavily depends on customer generosity. Believe it or not, everyone gets fucked over by billionaires in the end. These conditions, all of this creative decay and sterility, while all byproducts of capitalism do not exist in a vacuum, many of these factors we directly contribute to. While we may have no say in corporate governance, many of these conditions are simultaneously byproducts of both our complacency as well as our declining economic stability. These policies, these trends, they're all driven by our complacency with the status quo. The current economic system in which we live under instills in us at an early age that competition is necessary and simplicity equals perfection. As a consumer, we prioritize predictability and consistency everywhere we go. They want to know that they can expect the same taste and experience every time they visit their paper chain. This demand for consistency drives fast food companies to standardize their menus, recipes, and operational procedures to meet these expectations. In essence, we consumers actively support the corporate status quo by favoring the familiar and consistent offerings provided by these chains. They know we'll eat it right up, so they keep on serving. But I need my Starbucks. I need my corporate modern lifeless aesthetic. It's okay. They know you need it. Many consumers develop strong loyalty to whatever their favorite brand is. This loyalty is often built upon trust in the brand's reliability and the belief that they can depend on the same quality of food and service across different locations. In doing so, consumers contribute to the maintenance of corporate status quo by reinforcing their allegiance to these chains and their standardized offerings. They know at the end of the day, as long as they can deliver you the substandard product that you're accustomed to, you'll come running back. The quick service, the drive through options, the extended operating hours, they align with our consumeristic busy lifestyle. As we consumers prioritize convenience, they indirectly endorse the corporate status quo that values efficiency over autonomy and workers' rights. We're conditioned to turn a blind eye to these things because it's a natural part of the business world. It's just how things are, as we're told. We make excuses for greedy cost cutting and rebranding as the way things are. So yes, while these greedy companies may be sucking the life out of our restaurants, turning everything into a lifeless carbon copy of one another, they're doing so because we allow them to. We've allowed them to convince us that cost cutting, exploiting customers and workers is the natural way of doing things. They've convinced you, like their restaurants, that you have a shelf life. And when the time comes, they too will trim back and cut you down just to save money. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, this video took a really dark turn. I was just trying to talk about breakfast and how everybody and their mama is now selling chicken sandwiches and egg McMuffins. I wasn't trying to turn this into a dystopian tale of capitalism and greed, so I apologize for that. I mean, let's be real though. At the end of the day, this video ain't gonna stop you from eating it.